Hello, in today's video, we're gonna be going over Input Shaper. I'm gonna show you how you can use this little accelerometer here to print faster with less ringing and get better results out of your 3D printer running Clipper. So what is Input Shaper? It's a feature Clipper supports that is used to reduce ringing, also called ghosting, in 3D prints. You commonly see this around edges and it looks like an echo effect. Input shaping is an open loop control technique which creates a commanding signal that cancels its own vibrations. Input shaping requires some tuning and measurements before it can be enabled and using this little accelerometer here we can make that very simple. Input shaping typically reduces the vibrations and shaking of the printer in general and may also improve the reliability of the stealth chop mode with TMC drivers. I will include some links below that will have all the commands and instructions that I will be going over today so you can just copy and paste everything. And then also there is a ton more information. So if you wanna go really into depth with Input Shaper and really fine tune your printer, I encourage you to read all the information that is included in those links. Now the method of installing Input Shaper today that I'll be using is a very generalized, quick and simple method of doing the Input Shaper tune. Input Shaper does have a lot of variables and it is open to a lot of tuning. However, the process that I'll be going over should give you good results and noticeable improvement in print quality at higher accelerations on most printers. I am trying to keep this video to a manageable size and give you a basic overview of how to install Input Shaper. So if you would like to see a more in-depth video on it, let me know in the comments below. So before we get started on the software side of things, we are gonna have to get ourselves this little accelerometer here. Now this right here, is an ADXL345, and I'll have a link to where I purchased this on Amazon. You can find this in several different form factors. I recommend you get the form factor that I'm using today, that way you can follow along. You can find variants of this chip on AliExpress as well. It is a relatively inexpensive chip. Now when it comes to soldering the header on, you are gonna have to solder it with the pins up. This is on the side where all the surface mount components are on the little board. And on the back side here, you're gonna want the pins not sticking out much, if any at all. You wanna try and keep this side of the board as flat as possible. This will help a lot when it comes to getting accurate measurements because when you mount this, it's gonna to have to sit flush and perpendicular to whatever axis it is measuring. Now, after soldering the header on, I did make this handy dandy little cable loom here. And this way I can reuse this setup on multiple different printers. Once you are done tuning Input Shaper, you do not need to have the accelerometer attached to the printer anymore. So by having a pre-made setup that you could plug into multiple printers into their Raspberry Pis, you can just do this one printer after another with only one accelerometer. Now, as you can see here, this is how it calls out in the instructions on how to set up the connections between the ADXL345 and the Raspberry Pi. The board I'm using, this red one here on the right, just ignore the board color, my board just happens to be blue. But how I've done it though, is I've rearranged these two wires. So instead of the five volt and the ground being hooked up up here, I connected them further down here. This allows me to have a single four x four connection that I can plug into the Raspberry Pi. It just makes it a cleaner setup. Now, when you go to install this in your Raspberry Pi, ensure you are installing it on the correct pins. You don't want to accidentally short anything or feed five volts to something that shouldn't be fed five volts. So in my case here, my five volt pin is the ninth one down from the top and the top being where the display connector is. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There we go. So now we have it installed in the Raspberry Pi. Now, when it comes to attaching this to your printer, remember this is not gonna be a permanent setup. So you just need to temporarily attach it while we do the tune. Now, depending on your printer, you may only have to attach it once or twice. On a printer such as a Core XY, where the tool head moves in the X and the Y direction, you simply attach it to the tool head. On a printer such as my switch wire here, where the tool head moves on my X axis and the bed moves in the Y, we're gonna have to attach it to the tool head when we do the X tune, and then we're gonna have to attach it to the bed to do the Y tune. So when it comes to mounting the ADXL345, you need to ensure that it does have enough clearance because you are gonna have to home your printer before doing this test. So don't mount it in anywhere that will cause a crash. And when you mount it, make note of which direction you are measuring. So on the board itself, it will show an X, Y, and Z direction. Now on most boards, Z is up and down to the face of the board itself. So you don't have to mount the board so that it matches the direction of travel. You just have to know what direction on the board matches the direction of travel. 
So with the tool head here, it moves in the X axis. However, since I have it mounted here on the side, I will be looking at the Z axis results for my X axis. If this gets confusing, just write it down so you don't forget it later. And of course, after we've done the testing on the tool head, we are gonna have to move this to the bed itself to do the bed testing for the Y axis. So that completes the hardware aspect of installing everything for doing input shaper. Now we have to move on to the software side. Now for software, we are gonna have to add some dependencies to Clipper and configure some things. So you are gonna have to SSH into your Raspberry Pi and do some configuration editing as well. So the first thing you have to do is install NumPy. Now this will take actually about 20 minutes to install. So just run the command and then come back in 20 minutes once it's completed. So after that, we're gonna be installing some additional dependencies. And then once that is done, we're gonna to have to configure the Raspberry Pi itself as a secondary MCU so that Clipper can understand that something is hooked up to it and needs to be looking for that. So for this, we're gonna to have to install the RC script and then we're gonna to have to build microcontroller code. So CD Clipper, make menu config. This should look familiar if you flash Clipper on a controller board before. However, what we're gonna be doing is installing it so that the only thing selected is Linux process. Exit and save. So sudo service clipper stop, make flash, and then sudo service clipper start. And after that, we are gonna have to add some stuff to our clipper config. So just copy and paste that over. And then save and restart. And there we have it. Now the printer I'm gonna be doing everything on today is my Voron Switchwire, which is a Core XZ Cartesian style printer with a moving bed on the Y axis. And now that everything is hooked up, we can go ahead and just confirm that our printer does recognize the accelerometer. So simply run the command accelerometer query and you should see some numbers resulting there. This means that it is reading it and it is giving some information. Now you will have to go again into your printer config and ensure you have max Excel set to 10,000 and max Excel to D cell set to 10,000 as well. And then after that, we can go ahead and run the resonance test for, in our case here, the X axis. So it's simply test underscore resonances, axis equals X. Hit enter and let it do its thing. Now when it's doing this, your printer will vibrate. The, you will see some movement at first, and then as the frequencies get higher and higher, you won't see it as much as you'll hear it. So while it is doing this, just stand by. At first, you will see your axis moving, and then after a while, you won't see it move as much as you will hear it, and it'll, you'll hear it ramp up. And depending on how well your printer is built, you might start hearing or seeing some screws rattle as well as it moves through the frequency test. This will take a couple minutes, and then once it is done, it will save. Now, while it is doing this, ensure you do not touch the printer or adjust anything. You should actually be doing this as well where the printer will be running because if you are running this on a different surface, such as a wobbly table versus a fixed bench that the printer normally runs on, you will get different results. This needs to be run as the printer runs. So if you go ahead and adjust anything such as belt tension at a later date or anything that will affect how the printer would vibrate or resonate, you will need to rerun this tune. And then once it's done, you'll see a wait for calculations appear on your console. And then once you see that resonance data is written, you can go ahead and do the Y axis. Now in my case here, since the Y axis is a bed on this printer, I'm gonna to have to take the accelerometer and attach it to the bed itself. And then I'm gonna to have to run the same test only on the Y axis. Now when it comes to mounting this, again, you do have to make sure that this is a rigid mount. If you use something such as tape, where there's a little bit of give in there, you won't get an accurate result because you won't be measuring the true harmonics of the bed or the tool head in this case. Now, once this is done, you can go ahead and re-log back into your Raspberry Pi through an SSH terminal. I'm using PuTTY here. And then you're gonna run this command here. And what this will do is take that information and convert that into an actual readable chart. So you're gonna do this for your X axis and you're gonna do this for your Y axis. After that's complete, you can access the files on the Raspberry Pi. I use WinSCP and then navigate all the way up to the root directory of the Raspberry Pi. Find the folder called TMP. And right there you should see the 
input shaper results as a PNG file, copy both of those to your desktop. And this is what they look like. Now this right here is the results from our X axis resonance test. And as you can see, there's multiple different peaks and different values and whatnot. And again, we're gonna be going through and doing the simple input shaper tune. So what you're gonna do is look at the color chart here and you're gonna find the axis that corresponds to the axis you are measuring. So in my case here, measuring my X axis with the way the accelerometer was mounted, I will be looking at my Z data because that was the axis that corresponded to the direction of travel on the accelerometer as the printer was moving. So that would be my blue graph. And you're gonna look for where it peaks. So right about there. So it's about 71 or 72. So just make a note of that. And this is the results for my Y axis test. Now for the way it was mounted on my Y axis, I would be looking at my X data because that's just the way I had it mounted. And for my X data here, which is the red, it shows a value between 45 and 50. So now we go back into our configuration and we're gonna add a couple lines here. We're gonna add a section called input shaper and then we're gonna have shaper frequency for X, in our case 70, shaper frequency for Y, in our case 47, and the shaper type, we're gonna go with MZV. Now there are multiple types of input shaper that you can command. In my experience, I find MZV on most printers gives the best average good result. Now there are more aggressive input shapers than MCV. So if you are finding you have a lot of ringing, you can try a more aggressive one. There is documentation linked below about all the information about all the different settings for input shaper if you really wanna dive into it. However, do be aware that the more aggressive input shapers have a tendency to round sharp corners on prints. So if you print a lot of round cosmetic objects, you might not notice any issues. However, if you print a lot of structural components where you need sharp corners, for example, you may not want to be too aggressive with your input shaper. You have to remember with input shaper, you can't really cancel out all the ringing that a printer creates, but you can lessen it and improve print quality or be able to print at increased accelerations with the same or better quality. So once your configuration is set up and saved and your printer is restarted, you can go ahead, remove your accelerometer, and then your printer should be tuned for input shaper for the most part. You can go ahead and increase your accelerations a bit and do a test print. Now this print can be found on the Clipper GitHub and it's an acceleration test print. And I printed this one here before doing input shaper at variable accelerations up to 7,000. And the second one here, I printed after doing the input shaper tune at 10,000 acceleration. So those, both of these were printed at a fixed 100 millimeters a second as well. And as you can see, while it significantly lessened the amount of ringing, it does not remove it completely. So for a printer such as this, 10,000 acceleration still may be pushing it a little too much. However, comparing it to the previous results, you can definitely tell that we do have a marked improvement in reducing ghosting in my print, and I haven't had to lower my accelerations to snail's pace to do that. So I encourage you to give Input Shaper a try. If you are running Clipper, the accelerometer itself is relatively inexpensive. And I find tuning Input Shaper using this method versus the traditional method of doing a test print, doing some measuring and calibrating from there is not quite as accurate as this at all. Now, if you wanna see me spend some more time with Input Shaper and go over some of the more advanced tuning, such as determining what your maximum acceleration of the machine is capable of, and going over the different types of input shapers themselves and what you can do to further reduce ringing and improve quality and speed of your printer, make sure you let me know. And if you wanna see that video, make sure you subscribe to the channel so you can follow along. So I hope you found this video informative. I did try to condense as much information as I could into a quick bite-sized package to get you up and running with Input Shaper on your printer. I know a lot of people wanna try this feature out with Clipper, and I hope that this guide can help get you started there. If you wanna support the channel and support the content I create and the things I do, I do have links in the description for that. I hope you learned something new today, and as always, be safe out there, wash your hands, and have yourself a great day. Thank you.